actually cool. And you can turn, you know. Yeah, no box, no charger, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's you in can. a very specific case. Sold in Sheffield. Yeah. I've got like a 50 mile radius on, looking for that exact brand of camera. Honestly, well, they just put it up as like camera. Well, if it was me, camera. yeah, they wouldn't have anything in the car, do they? They say it on the thing, though. Camera. And they'd Google it and see, oh my god, this is a £250 camera. Like, that's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mo like, most of the stuff here, you know, it's... We're in a day and age where the managers of this store can Google what an LG... <coughs> oh, yeah. 13-inch LG... Yeah, it's easy, you know. 720p flat screen telly. Yeah. Goes for on eBay. And then they'll put a price on. But like 10 years ago, they just. It was down to the experts, so let's call the expert and find out the value. Yeah. It was like a uh, pawn shop or something. Yeah. But they were the days when you could go and get like a Nintendo 64 for like £1.50 because they don't even know what it is. Mm. I think it's like some vintage tape recorder that nobody had wanted. Listen to that car boot sales. If it's not sort of. Yeah. Made corporate and it's just some guy selling. Yeah. You get a lot of um, rough, one, rough people that just don't know what the value of it is. Yeah, they just want to get rid of it, don't they? Why have we not done a car boot sale? You go, you go away early for a car boot sale. Yeah, it's like painfully early, it's like 6 in the morning now, isn't it? Mate, 6 in the morning if you want to go, if you actually want to go and sell up, it's like 5, 4, 5. On a Sunday. Yeah, you wake up at 4 o'clock to like go to work on a Sunday. To earn yourself 20 quid. Yeah. This this country is has good outlets for it. Really. Yeah, yeah. Just take myself. And they'll take it. They'll take anything. Yeah. Say yeah, if you can move it, you can have it. But in a lot of places, it's just like immediately straight to landfill, and that hurts. You know, like the, there is a sustainability part, like for the for the planet. I don't want to accrue loads of stuff and just throw it away. Oh. But I guess. It is mostly personal, like you say, when you're pushing that thing up the hill. Alright, for example, I remember made a video last night about going for my drawers. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And it's like, damn. Damn, yeah. You're like the guy pushing the boulder up the mountain, but <coughs> that boulder is all your shit yeah, that you're having to carry with you. Imagine having that realization, turning around one day, you see you've got something like crap, and you're like 60. It's, like it's too late, like, you've got way too much stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember going past somebody that had the garage open on my street. They said all this, they just got the garage and they just pulled all the stuff out of the garage, put it in the front garden, and they were just like, oh yeah, it's all for sale, we're giving it away. <coughs> and it was the most random stuff. Like, the most Inflatable like, tube, man. Well, that's kind of cool though, but this stuff is like, <laughs> what is worse than that? Like, like rusty saw yeah. blades. And like loads of tools and scaffolding and boxes of screws. Loads of boxes of screws. Like very specific parts for cars that they haven't had for like 20 years. Yeah. And then it's like super oversized parts, like <laughs> car door interiors and like wiring looms. Oh god. Um, stereos. And you go, you go, oh look, there's some cool gems in here. And you go and you realize it's all just garbage. It's like landfill. Yeah. Yeah, when it gets to that stage, that is when you just give it away. Yeah. But obviously, you're losing out on that money if you don't capitalise on the hill. Because it probably was useful at, at the same time. Mm. But if you get sentimental and you just keep holding on to it, it's just devaluing. It's like yeah. having cash in your wallet. Yeah. Every day that goes by, that's less and less valuable. Yeah. So, you know, get it sold or get it converted. Yeah. But um, I don't know, I'm not too shit. You'll see the thing online of like some minimalist that have got like, nothing. And you go like, oh, I want to do that. And you start throwing out some stuff, and you go, okay, I can't. I got to keep that. Yeah. I got to keep that. And you just go, oh, fuck it, I'm nowhere near the middle. I just give up. It gets harder and harder. Yeah. It does get hard. It's because it feels like a part of you, doesn't it? Like especially like an old console, like a, my Game Boy SP or PS2. It's like it feels like it's part of my character. Because it's yours, you can't. You could just go out and buy another one, but it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. it's not the same. So yeah. This is my DNA from when I was last. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to change or play anything because I was like, I'm not worthy of changing the data on this PS2 because mm -hmm. it's like my child self has you know, set it up.
as a, as a caveat for us sitting here, if anyone comes over here, we'll invite them and try and sell them this massage chair. This massage chair that's like right there. Yeah. Kind of sus to it. Like it'll just catch fire. Yeah. Like it heat, heats you up. Yeah, yeah. But that's like, for me, that's like, you don't want, that's the exact part of your body that you don't want heating. If you sat down. That. You're back in your ass. Heating. No, it's like, like, I don't want that. No, you get too hot, you get swamped. Well, it's like, um, you know, being there. You get heat seats in the car. You've got like heat seats and I'm like, this is horrible. Like, yeah. What the hell is this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. And then he puts freezing cold on the feet. Oh, yeah, the big oh, cold the flowers. Yeah. yeah. It's horrible. No, <laughs> no. All well, my experience with heat seats in cars, um, men have it on like one sometimes. And then women had it like three all the time. Yeah, yeah. Always had it warm all the time. The heat seats are just an invention for females and cars. Yeah. Would you count cars as stuff? Or is that a tool? Is it a car a thing? I think we've pretty much said everything. We've said everything we just say about cars. You never actually done with it. I mean, I guess you have to own it at the end of it, but you've got to pay them to give you, to, to take off your hands, do you know what I mean? It's like a thing that nobody wants, it's all just like hot potato, you know. It's like juggling, if you're a car dealership, you're just juggling, like. You give a car to a guy, he comes back in three years, you know, it's like, it's all just contractual bullshit as well. I remember when we did have a jeep home that came in and, uh, so, I say that. We're in deep, deep south. Yeah, we're yeah. in deep south, can't, can't be saying something like that. Yeah, anyway, this jeep came in and um, he, uh, it wasn't Brett May, but it was like, yeah, yeah, like a Brett May name. His name was like Stevie, like Brent, Brent Jones or something. Okay. Yeah, you know, it was like yeah. something that you'd hear on on a news report. But anyway, he had an M4. He had a what's the colour code? You know that light, that baby blue. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it was called. Was it not San Marino? That's dark blue. It'll come back to me. Anyway, he had that light blue, like footboy blue, on his M4 convertible. And um, he brought it in for a service, it's like a warranty thing. And he's obviously paying for this with like some fake money on finance. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and this is a guy who obviously probably owns a lot of stuff, probably a lot of chrome and glass and Versace rug floor mm. in his bungalow or whatever, you know. Um, and his idea of owning this thing is. I'm going to own it and pay for it with this fake money and take it off. And that was like his mindset towards it. It was fake cash, was it? Well, it's fake income, yeah. He's like avoiding tax and doing all this dodgy mm. stuff. But anyway, he's, um, he brings his car in for service and we're like, well, well, you know, if we give him a service invoice, he might not pay it. You know? so it, was, it was a bit of a weird one. And we kept it on the back burner for ages. His car was sat in our lot for ages. And while they were figuring out what to do, with, what, you know, how to deal with this guy, they gave him an M5 as a service car for like a week, let's say. Uh -huh. Week goes by, his car ends up, ends up going into the shops out in a day and he gets it fixed. And, um, and then we call him, we call him, we call him. He's like, oh, your M4's ready, your M4's ready. And then suddenly my boss goes, wait, who's in the M5? I haven't seen that in, I haven't seen that in a while. And then one of the service guys goes, oh, that's Brent Jones is in that car. And they go, oh, like, gave him the M5. I'm like, well, you have to give him an equivalent car. He brought an M4 in. He brought an M4 con. And, uh, <laughs> equivalent in terms of what price? Well, no, just performance. Really. It's, like, it's like, there's a few parameters. You know, it has to be yeah. Yeah. somewhat close. Somewhat close. And I guess, I think we had like, I don't know, we had like an X5 for service, we had like an electric car, we had like one of every, one of each car, and the M car that we had at the moment was that M5. Yeah. It was the M5 yeah. comp in black. Yeah, it'll do it, it'll do it. And it was well. spectacular, like everything. Right. So one, yeah. once my boss realises that like, this guy's got a car, he goes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes on a mission. <clears throat> so anyway, so he's tracking this car, he's tracking this M5, he's like, oh my god, he's in, he's in London. I'm like, well, he's in London? Like, yeah. And then we kind of forget about it for a day, and then my boss goes back to it, and everybody's like crying around his computer, and he's like, he's, 
he's in the middle of the sea. He's like, wait, what do you mean he's in the middle of the sea? And then my boss is like, oh no, oh no, he starts calling people and I forgot to do my own thing. Yeah. I get the story. He's in Amsterdam. He's driven the he's ferried, he's ferried it to Amsterdam. He's ferried it. He's driven to Amsterdam. And at this point he's not insured. If you get, if you loan someone a car for a week and they sign something, they have to bring it back. But you go, after this point you won't be insured. So if you yeah. crash it, you're paying for it. But because we know that this guy's probably not gonna be able to pay for it, yeah. what do they do? Do they have a Call him and call him and call him and say, hey look, if you crash that or if it something happens to it, you're responsible for it, we're gonna have you on the hook. Mm. Or do they just go, Oh, we'll just smack another week's insurance on it and if something happens we'll just sign off and you know. Why would you do Because Wow. No way. Well, I know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, you brought it in. Yeah. It fits right in. Um, you should buy second hand stuff because fucking retail stuff is overpriced. Yeah, deliberately. It's crazy overpriced. It's like, yeah. it's like I have a rich guy tax or a like stupid guy tax. Yeah. Oh, you don't want like a scratch on the underside of the item. 50% mm. more. The richer you get, the more emphasis there is on quality over getting a deal or getting multiple things. I know it's more expensive just to buy one bucket of popcorn or whatever, but I don't want one. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's like, where do you draw the line between... It's hell of a lot cheaper, but it's also a lot worse for me. It's worse for you, yeah. yeah. One of the things, you know, like, you should skimp out on a few things in life, like, I'll go for the cheaper jeans. Yeah. But you shouldn't be saying, I'll go for the shit fuel to put on my get, body. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that you should be prioritising. Yeah, for sure. You know, you won't be drinking muddy water if it's cheaper than clear water. It's like you're in your restaurant, you're like, oh, I really want a steak, but it's too expensive, so I'm going to get a baked bean burrito. It's like, that's affecting your health now, you know? I think that's the one thing. If I was a rich guy, I'd eat so much better. Yeah, you accumulate money to, to get better health. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't drink muddy water. But put shit for you. And steal from supermarkets. Steal from supermarkets. Keep coming, my shoes. Metal chamber. It's sterile. Isn't it? Well, yeah, you get... oh, you're still here. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> what were your podcast about? Can I ask? Yeah, um, right now it's about stuff. 